Welcome back to Coffee with Moshe. Today is April 29th, 2020. I believe here we are in Israel in Ma'ale Adumim. And today we'll be reading a blog from 2011, one of the early ones. I don't have the exact date, but this book is the blogs published by IKI, available on the internet and through us. Okay. Today's blog is called Central Control versus the distribution of power. And this comes from years of martial arts training as well as having a degree and having studied political science and history for many years. When I was in UCLA, that was one of my majors. A lot of books here on political science. Okay. When I was younger, my friend Myron Jones said, Moshe, you realize you are a control freak. This I had not known. As I thought about it, I realized he was correct. Over the years, I have worked to balance my need for order, control, and discipline in my life with the understanding that no matter what we do, we humans will never be in total control. Look at the situation we're in now with this coronavirus thing. There are greater powers out there. There is strength and wisdom in knowing when to let things be and relinquish control. I have learned not to control the people in my life. I certainly cannot control the events surrounding me, the stock market, the dollar shekel exchange rate, the world economy, flights. I do still try to maintain some control over my own life as I need the stability and security that control affords. With IKI, these control issues become very important. Most of our members are veteran instructors with established schools of their own. Many of our instructors are ninth dance, even 10th dance. They come to IKI with a lot of experience. For those who want guidance, I am here for you. For those who want to be left alone, I try to live by the philosophy of the government that governs least, governs best. Adam Smith, laissez-faire, the invisible hand of the market. If an instructor joins IKI and he is already a high-ranking black belt with a successful school, I will not attempt to tell him how to run his business. Not only does he have the experience, but he is there on the scene. He knows his students better than I do. He knows his culture better than I do. I want everyone to learn gun techniques, so I teach these straight from the start. In some cultures, guns are everywhere. Here in Israel, every child sees handguns and rifles every day. So when I teach gun defenses to children in Israel, no one freaks out. Perhaps in another country, the citizens are not exposed to firearms. Seeing a replica weapon or even a knife might scare them off from training. I've seen that. I exercise quality control. I visit the schools when I do my seminars. I test the students. I test the teachers, the instructors, and I make sure they are teaching authentic IKI techniques and not some commercialized, watered-down, freestyle Krav Maga. In order to be an IKI school, you must stick with the IKI techniques. Yet, I will not tell you, at week seven, all students must know three gun disarms and four knife defenses. I trust my affiliated instructors to exercise their own good judgment and experience. Some members feel I do not exercise enough central control. They want lesson plans. My teacher had a curriculum for ranks, but over the years, I discovered that it didn't work for me. The younger students could not do the techniques that demanded fine motor coordination beyond their young abilities. The older students could not handle the flexibility demands and the condition fighting requirements that the younger people could do. I soon realized that I had to adjust the curriculum for my own students based on my firsthand knowledge of their needs. IKI does not try to impose a one-size-fits-all curriculum. We understand the individual. The bottom line is people need to learn the techniques and be able to defend themselves. That's what matters most. How to best implement the techniques depends upon the individual instructor and students. As it says in the book of Proverbs, educate the young man according to his own way, and even as he grows old, he shall never deviate from it. That is in um, Mishle, Proverbs, uh, chapter 22, 6. 
And I write here, that is the best advice I can offer. As is often the case, the best advice was written a long time ago by people smarter than us. So that's today's message. The point being, yes, we want control, but at a certain point in our lives we have to understand we will never have absolute control. We don't want to, li we don't want to live in anarchy. We do want control of what we're doing to the best of our extent. We're going through difficult times now. Many people no longer have their jobs because the government has shut them down. Unfortunately, we can't have complete control of what the government does as much as we'd like to. We should have savings. We should work hard to put money aside for a rainy day, no matter how difficult times are. You make a dollar, put 50 cents away. Save for a difficult time. And that gives you some control over your own life. Enjoy the coffee.